one of the Facebook groups, someone asked a question about freeze drying candy in a heated vacuum oven. And that sparked my entrance, interest. And some of you might know, you've probably seen a couple of my videos where I do epoxy resin. So I've always wanted to get me a vacuum chamber because you use a vacuum chamber to get the rid of the bubbles in your castings. So I think this was the perfect opportunity. So I took my uh, tax return and invested in a few things. And we're going to try to make candy, freeze dried candy, without freeze drying it. So here's what I got, got from Amazon. I got a vacuum chamber. I got a Vac Master, Vacuum Master Robin Air vacuum pump, which is very similar to the Harvest Right one. And I got bought, and I was the, the problem was I was wondering how you, I was going to heat up the uh, vacuum chamber. And I thought about it, and I thought, well, I could put it on a uh, stove, you know, or on a little heating uh, stove. Or something like that and I was searching around on the internet and wouldn't you know they make an attachment specifically for vacuum chambers you stick this to the bottom of your pot you can peel that off and actually stick it to the pot and uh, heat up your uh, chamber it's just specifically designed for vacuum chambers so let me get this all unpackaged. We'll take you through me setting it up and then we'll give it a shot. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so what we have here, this is your vacuum chamber right here. And it came with the hose and a few other things like a filter for when you draw in your air. And uh, what else do I got? little pad to stick in the bottom of it bottom of it now this is like a medium range uh, vacuum chamber I'm gonna put links to all this in my Amazon store but the chamber this this chamber you can buy a lot cheaper ones than this and you can buy a lot more expensive ones than this but I went for the mid-range and I went for the ones with the glass top they, they have them much cheaper with uh, tops kind of like the doors on our freeze dryers but you can't do harsh chemicals and there's a lot of things you can't do with those because the uh, will start hazing and cracking and all that stuff and who knows what I'm going to do with this in the future so I wanted to get one that had the glass on it that way I don't have to worry about you know anything in the future but for the candy purposes you could probably get away with just the uh, the, uh, the the cheaper plexiglass or Pyrex well, plexiglass I think is what it's called you know the plastic doors the plastic lid and uh, let's see not much to talk about that this is a five gallon capacity then I got the Robin Air mid range pump again I don't know the num model number right off the top of my head but uh, it's not important. You, what you're going to look for is something, you know, you can go to Harbor Freight and buy a, a cheap pump. But uh, the chamber comes with a quarter inch, so you want to make sure you got a quarter inch uh, outlet. That way this hose will go straight on. You don't have to do, do no adapters or anything like that. And Robin Air came with that one. And uh, like I said, this is mid-range, and I think it's five cubic foot per minute and uh, you can probably get away with lower than that but again who knows what I'm going to do with this in the future and I wanted a halfway decent pump so I went mid-range on Robin Air so before we mess with the uh, heat plate I want to see how this all works so let's turn it on I guess that's a standard thing right there is the, the uh, smoking. I was reading up on it. 
As it draws a vacuum, that should go away. Okay, I am tickled to death. I just went to Walmart and got some candy so we can run some tests on it. And I put this vacuum on this an hour ago and it has held the vacuum. So, I'm happy with that. That's what it's supposed to do. So, I'm going to play with the uh, thermostat on this and get this, uh, see if I can get this running. And then I'll get back to you and we'll see what happens next. Okay, I have spent two days playing with this, trying to get everything right. And I've done some Skittles. I've done some Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers came out beautiful. I probably should have done them in this video. Uh, I've done some uh, Gummy Bears. That's an interesting story. I had the temperature too hot in here and they puffed up the size of a softball looked really cool but they were just too delicate you couldn't do anything with them so I gotta work on the gummy bears what else do we do a uh, bit of honey I did some bit of honey and uh, I'm sure there's some other things that I try but I wanted to perfect the skittles because everybody loves skittles and I've got it as close as I can to the freeze-dried version you're gonna get some uh, ones that don't puff up for some reason because if I go too hot in here they puff up too much and it just makes a mess trying to get them to break apart and if I don't put enough temperature in there then they don't they don't they don't get crunchy they stay kind of chewy so I think I found about the right medium on that so, before I press on though, I have something I need to point out to you guys that isn't really talked about when you buy these. The heater pad for this. Let me show you. It burns your tabletop if you have it directly sit, because it's glued to the bottom of the pot. Can you see it there? It's glued to the bottom of the pot. Then I had it sitting on this. Actually, I had it sitting on the table. Underneath here is a real dark singe mark on my table that I'm going to have to sand out. So I put this down for it and used it. And then I ordered some trivets. And, uh, the, and I got it sitting on a trivet now to kind of get it off the uh, tabletop. I don't like using trivets because it makes it kind of wobbly. But there you are. Can't have everything. Alright. So... What we're going to do is we're going to turn this on. The uh, directions are pretty straightforward in this, but you press set, and then the up arrow or the down arrow until you get to the temperature that you want it to set at. And right now I've got it set at 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and that seems to be a good one. So you set yours to 230, and then press set again. And it, that little heat symbol means it's heating up now. It's already at 180 because I've been using this. All right. So, I got these trays. What's that? Cake company, the decorating company, Wilton or something like that. I got them on Amazon. They are 9 inches round and 2 inches deep. Let me take the lid off this. And I got a, a set of four racks, and I think these are 10 inches. And I got this so that we can set that in there and set the tray, because I found that if I set this straight on the bottom, it gets too hot. And it melts, burns my candy, basically. So I got this trivet that I'm going to set inside, like such. And I've also, the same trivet is what I got underneath there as well. So we're going to put the tray in there, we're going to open up our Skittles, alright, actually we'll show you then how much I'm going to put in here. You don't want to, I found you don't want to overfill the tray because they all stick together. I'm going to put about half the pack, half the pack in there, 
We'll do it in two loads. Just kind of spread them out to where every one of the Skittles is touching the bottom. Seems to kind of work better. Then we're going to put this in the pot. And then we're going to put the lid on. Like that. And we are going to let this heat up that those Skittles for 30 minutes. And what this will do is it'll cycle all the way up to 230. The heaters will go off. It might rise a few degrees and then it drops down almost 10 degrees and the heater kicks on. So it keeps it at that, maintains it at that temperature. It's a pretty cool little box. I mean, I haven't done everything. It's got features for timers and all that stuff, which I'm not using. So anyway, I'll see you in 30 minutes and we will check the temperature of this okay it's been half an hour let's see what the temperature is now I just put that lid off to the side because we're gonna use the laser thermometer and zap those and it is not hot enough yet right now we're at 111 you do not want to start, I don't think. My experience is you want those to be about 125. Too much less than that, they don't puff up. You get a lot of them that don't puff up. And too, too much higher than that, then they puff up so much that it becomes a big bunch of gooey ball of stuff and you can't separate them. So 125 is the magic number. So I'll just keep checking that until it gets uh, to 125. Shouldn't take much longer, probably another 10 minutes. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay, that's been another 10 minutes. Let's see where we're at. We're at 123, which is, we're going to call that good. Only because it's getting late at night and I want to get this video out today. So, let me explain what's going to happen here because once I turn this on, it gets kind of noisy. So, we're going to leave the heat on. We're going to turn the pump on. We're going to open the uh, pump valve so it can vacuum the chamber. And we're going to let that run for an hour. This pump is going to smoke quite a bit at the beginning of the drawdown of the vacuum but as it, that needle pegs out over here in the 30 it gets a lot quieter, the pump gets quieter and it quits smoking so don't worry about that. If it smokes a lot it's supposed to. That's, that's part of its design. Um, what else is there to tell you about that? So we're just going to do that for 30 minutes, um, for an hour and these, as soon as that vacuum kicks on and it gets about 10, 20, in the 10, 20s on this dial here, they'll start, these skills will start popping. And uh, some of them probably won't pop all the way. But you get the same thing in the freeze dryer. So we're going to fire it up and run this for an hour. Run the vacuum for an hour. Are you ready? Ready for the noise? Here we go. I forgot to close my drain valve there. Don't forget to do that. Okay, they have been in for an hour, so let's shut the valve, the vacuum valve, turn the pump off. reason you shut that is that way it don't suck, the vacuum don't suck oil from your pump. Learn that the hard way. And then we're going to open the drain valve.
take the lid off. Let's turn this off. Let's move this out of the way. If you take this out, see that burn spot I put on there? That's going to take me some work to get rid of that. There they are. There's your Skittles. Now these are hot, and this pot is still very hot at the bottom. Up at the top, it's kind of, you know, it's not hot. But the closer you get to the bottom where the heat pad, that, that's hot. So just bear that in mind. So we're going to let these cool down totally till the whole thing is room temperature. Then we'll take those out and break them apart. But here's some I done earlier. And there you have it. Let's see. I want to try and get a good thumbnail of this with everything in the picture. And not a bunch of cords. There you have it. Freeze dried puff skittles. I'm not freeze dried, uh, vacuumed, unfreeze dried. See, they stick together like that, but when they're cooled down, they just break apart pretty easy. There you go. And these are crunchy. Now, I probably need to explain why we ran that for an hour. I don't know if I did that in already. But once those puff up, if we turned it off and took them out, they, they would just be real chewy, puffed up and real chewy. I found that you have to run that for at least an hour and then let them cool down. And then they'll turn crunchy like these are. Hmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you if you think about trying this out, or thinking about trying it out, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I am going to be doing separate videos on a lot of the different candies. That way I can show you the temperature that I set it at, the times that I use, and the end results. And... Uh, like I said, I've already done Jolly Ranchers. Pretty, pretty much sure that's going to be a straightforward one. A uh, bit of honey. That worked out really straightforward, I think. And uh, my gummy bears, I had a blow up on those. I mean, it was cool as anything. It, it got massive and looked pretty, but I mean, you, you couldn't do anything with it. It was just, you could blow on it and it would, it would dis disintegrate. So we got to work out the gummy bears. So like I say, subscribe to my channel and click the bell and you'll be notified every time I put up a video. And that way, when I do some other candy that's not in the freeze dryer, you'll know. And for all my freeze dryer viewers, don't worry, I got plenty of freeze drying videos coming out. I'm still working on some uh, paucho noodles and I'm going to incorporate my vacuum chamber into my freeze drying as well so y'all thank you for watching and i hope you all come back